Hey all, Ben here, done that, and welcome back as we cover more about that long lost Eric Clapton James Bond theme. Is it real? Is it a fraud? Will Eric Clapton sue us all? These are the questions that keep us up at night. So I'm going to cut right to the chase. I am now very confident in saying that the track we are talking about is legitimate. The lost Eric Clapton James Bond theme from 1989's License to Kill has been leaked, evaluated, and confirmed. So here's what happened after my last video upload, and if you haven't yet, be sure to check that out for the first part of this Lost Media Saga. I put together a Twitter thread detailing the information I had gathered up to that point, and it caught the attention of a small group of people, but they were the right people. It kept the discussion going, kept people talking, and I was also able to find the Japanese Clapton bootleg CD that Mikey Mike had mentioned in my conversations with him, and that did confirm that part of the story. But then, the final, for me anyways, confirmation happened. The music editor from 1989's License to Kill, Andy Glenn, found the conversation and weighed in. Mr. Glenn's IMDb credits are extensive and very impressive, with License to Kill being among his first as music editor. As music editor on the movie, I was at the studio, though like the music supervisor, was not allowed into the control room. I did hear the result though, and will be able to verify whether this tape is legit. Now when I saw that, I responded to that tweet as quick as I could, and I sent him a link to the internet archive which has the track listed, which I'm also going to link to in the description below, and he responded. Thanks. It is better than I remember, but not much. It got a very limited airing back at Pinewood and was then quickly forgotten. If I remember correctly, Michael Kamen had mentioned inviting several other guitarist mates, including Dave Gilmore and Jeff Beck, but only Eric Clapton and Vic Flick showed. Michael was very charismatic, energetic, and popular in the business. I have no doubt he could have gathered quite a team, but it was all very last minute, rather shambolic. If I remember correctly, the producers were not impressed. Now, this not only confirms that the track that we're talking about is the real McCoy, but it also gives us a better behind the scenes look at the production of this rejected track than we've really ever gotten previously. And this is where I'm gonna go a bit off the path and I'm gonna go into my own personal conjecture. Previously, the rejected theme has been inferred to be a Clapton specific vehicle. But with this additional information, it appears that Cayman was attempting to form some kind of guitar supergroup to perform the theme. And this kind of fits with the direction the series was going, with groups like AHA and Duran Duran performing the themes for the last two films. If this is how it was initially pitched to the James Bond producers, unfortunately it's hard to believe that anything that Clapton and Flick could have come up with would have lived up to that artificially high expectation created by that what if scenario. Now do I know that for a fact? Obviously not, but does make for an interesting mental exercise and add some more fuel to that conversation. Also, big shout out to mi6hq.com for featuring my last video and some of the information I was able to dig up. Be sure to check them out as well as they also continue to cover this story as more information is found. And that's about all I've got for you today. Be sure to like, subscribe, and send your feedback via Telegraph or Carrier Pigeon. Or you can leave a comment. That might be easier.